to Hero You Rogue to Redemption. We're in the grand tradition of things. It's past our bedtime. Yikes, I don't want to miss breakfast again. As I was saying, welcome back to the Disbarred Bards class. I trust that you spent your free time developing and practicing your rogue skills. All of you did well on the test. You are all to be commended for your achievement. As a result, you are all eligible to take elective classes. You can either take an advanced version of your previous elective or a new one. Your choices are science or first aid. If you have some magical potential, you may also take a beginning magic class. The elective classes begin this afternoon, so you must choose quickly and wisely. Well, you know me. Advanced science. Advanced science is where it's at. Now, do any of you have a question or comment about the exam? If the test is to be believed, are most rogues arrogant, self-centered, and self-righteous? You, Herr Kent, are a living example of why that sentence is tempered by the usage of the word most. Rogues know that they are smarter and more skilled than most people. This comes across to others as arrogance. We have confidence in our abilities and tendency to be loners, which comes across as self-centered to the outside world. We also have strong moral compass, hence the reputation for being self-righteous. Any other questions? And the question about the chest in the ruined castle, why is the correct answer to leave the safe alone because it's a trap? Wasn't the whole point of the way of the spider about how to deal with traps? Yes, the way of the spider was a lesson about traps. However, the question was phrased, what is the wisest thing to do about the safe, rather than about the way of the spider? It is always wisest to avoid danger. Hey, Voyaging Moon. Good to see you again. While rogues are intelligent, they are not always very wise. Still, it is prudent to recognize when we are taking unnecessary risks. Any further questions or comments? It was an excellent test, Master von Uwald. I learned a great deal from it. Well, if he's gonna suck up, I'm gonna suck up. Nat! Hey! I think the better answer for the differences between rogues and thieves should have been all of the above rather than just about the moral aspect. I mean, we do use our brains more than thieves. And having a good sense of humor is a pretty major difference, too. Yes, in... Intelligence, scruples, and a sense of humor are all differences between rogues and thieves. However, not all thieves get caught. And as you know from experience, sometimes rogues are the ones who get caught. Tomorrow, we shall delve deeper into the advanced art of opening safes and picking locks. Bring your Houdini with you to class. I remind those who seek to further their knowledge that the elective classes will be held one hour from now. Good day. Let's chat with Joel here. I did a little research on the sea caves over the holidays. I learned more about the pirate treasure that is rumored to be hidden there. Now, it is in fact fully plausible that Joel knows this password, so let's ask him. You wouldn't by any chance know the password to get inside the crypt in the catacombs, would you? Why, which crypt would that be? How many crypts in the catacombs need a password to enter? <laughs> I know of only one. Festa Edwin Sabers. Yes, I do happen to know the correct password. I would be more than happy to share this information with you for a nominal fee. Since we are such good friends, I will only charge you 10 lira for the password. Ten lira, ah, sure. I'm over seven hundred. I can, I can shell out a little for this greedy. Here now, what's the password? The 
password to Fester Saver's crypt is Pesque Spada. I believe you will find that your money was well spent for that information. Alright, let's see what else Joel has to say. How was your vacation? The past few days have been most useful and interesting. I have learned many things that may be of value. Does the price change based on how much you flirt with him? Um, I think to some extent, I know for a fact that if I waited longer, I could get it from him for free, but I actually want to get in there this session, so I'm willing to cough up the money. But yes, your relationship with Joel affects how much he charges for that specific piece of information. It was also good to be away from Cesare for a few days. He was most vociferous with his anger that you had thwarted him. What did you learn about pirates? Ten years ago, a pirate ship, the Royal Flush, is reported to have been lost off the coast of Sardonia as it sailed to Caligari in the middle of a terrible storm. Rumor has it it was laden with treasure. According to certain unsavory local sailor sailors, the ship crashed into the sea caves. Miss McMichael's map most likely leads to the treasure of the Royal Flush. What's this about treasure? Hey, Summer. The Royal Flush was said to have attacked a rich merchant ship from Hispaniola that was laden with goods and gold from Costa Nueva. The Flush held a king's ransom worth of goods when it was shipwrecked. Ah, we went over the test in class. So not that much new information there. But we are doing advanced science. What else have you heard about the pirates? The captain of the Royal Flush was Dirty Deal Hoyle, a notorious gambler. It was said that he couldn't resist a bet. He won the Royal Flush in a massive poobah game that lasted three days. Everyone did quite well on the test. Katie and I found the treasure of the Royal Flush. It was every bit as impressive as the rumors tell. You and Katie? Found the pirate treasure? Yes, it was locked behind a magical wall and guarded by an ugly tentacled horror, but we braved all the dangers and won the prize. See, I've got some of the pirate booty on me now. I'm much richer than I was the day I first met you. Most intriguing, Sean. I believe that I shall have to carry some more costly items in my store to tempt you to spend some of that ill-gotten gain. That somehow makes me better friends with him. Joel is... Joel is a very interesting dude. Got anything new in store? Oh, yes. I came across a very valuable set of magical thieves tools. They glow slightly in the dark and greatly improve your chance of successfully opening a lock. You will find them most useful, don't you think? You always have the niftiest things to sell, Joel. It's a pleasure shopping with you. See you later. Good day to you. You should call this the Joel's Soar with More to make me poor. You certainly know how to get me to spend my hard-earned lira. I try very hard to find items that will be useful to you and other disbarred bards. Let's browse the shop while we're here. I could probably use a little more of this stuff. And magical lockpicks. Eh, yeah, I'll buy the magic lockpicks. Let's see if I have anything to offload here. Yeah, I don't need crap that actually damages my opponent. Um, let me put on enough of the good armor to be sure that I'm not... Look at how charming I am. I am super charming. Not very healthy, but charming. Yeah, 
And we, yeah, let's dispose of this excess leather jacket. Check and see if anyone's talking in here. No one there. Probably no one in the locker room, but worth a check. Let's go to advanced science! Up, up and away! I'm not wearing anything like the school uniform here, so we'll do a save before dodging Turk. Just to be on the safe side. Class, I am Dr. Emmental von Braun, and you are as you are undoubtedly aware, this is Science 102, Practical Applications of Basic Scientific Principles! In the course of this session, we will combine lecture with laboratory experimentation. We shall see chemistry and physics in action! In particular, we shall concentrate upon a series of principles I call thermodynamics. From the Greek word therme meaning heat and the word dynamic because this is so exciting! Now, before we get to the active experimentation, are there any questions or comments? Let's, uh... Ask about the lab, yeah. Does this mean that we'll have science lab time in every class? I can assure you the motto of this class is Experimentum per Singulos Dies. You'll have so much experiential learning from this course that a post Deriori education becomes a priority to you. Are you ready to do some science? Of course you are. After all, cogito ergo sum. Let's, uh, use up our only portion of sulfur here. Get some flash powder. I think I don't have enough gooey to make super gluey. Oh, I do. Well, that's... That's my class for the day. SCIENCE! That's the early dinner bell. It's about time to go to the dining hall. So how are we doing today, folks in the chat? see what's for dinner today. Today's menu is Irish cuisine, lamb stew, and soda bread. Finally, some real food just like mama makes. It's awfully loud in there. Sounds like dinner's already started. So Sean helped you recover the tri pirate treasure? Yeah, he helped a little. Hey, I did all the work. It was a dirty job, Sean. I'm just glad you were there to do it. What did you do with all the treasure? Oh, I took a few things from it, but I left most of it there. It's about as safe as it can be where it is. When my father returns to port, I'll have him and his old crewmates split the bulk of the treasure amongst them. It's only fair. Why does Turk always stand right behind the table the whole meal? Uh, because he hates us and doesn't trust us and thinks we'll steal the silverware. The rest of the treasure I'll use to turn my inn into a home for retired sailors. It will give sailors something better to do in old age than turning into zombie pirates. Was it as dangerous as you thought it would be? It was very dangerous. No doubt about that. But with Sean there to help, I knew we'd succeed. He's almost as good as he thinks he is. This is a dining hall, not a social hall! Everyone clean up their messes and leave! We'll be in the rec room this evening if you'd like to talk. I 
can't believe that you would imply that Turk is in any way, shape, or form a sneak. I think I hear people talking behind that door. I hear people talking. Well, if it isn't the elusive and mysterious disbarred bard instructor. So you do leave your dungeon occasionally. I was beginning to wonder since I so seldom see you. Good evening, Fräulein Miranda. Tell me, Mr. Tall, Dark, and Distinguished, how do you get in and out of this castle without going through my reception? Is there really a secret passageway that goes to the city? There are many secret passageways in the castle, Fräulein. You know, there are a lot of rumors about you. Mortimer thinks you used to be a thieves' guildmaster and that you blackmailed the headmaster in order to work here. Herr Turk says many things of little truth. I suggest you disregard idle gossip. What about the rumor that you're teaching your thie students thief skills in order to form your own thieves guild here in Caligari? Is that false too? I do not teach thieves, Fräulein. You insult my students with such innuendo. Don't insult my intelligence. That shifty little rat of yours runs his own black market here, and the sneaky redhead has a patron in very low places. Disbarred bards, indeed. What sneaky redhead? I teach rogues, not thieves. Rogues have morals, integrity, and a sense of honor. Clearly, Fräulein Miranda, you do not. Well, the chill factor coming from the faculty room would freeze the sea. Shame that they stopped talking. So actually, let's check the other door here on the off chance. Uh, yep, I think I hear someone talking in the next room. I can't make out the words, but someone is talking in the room. Gosh, I wonder who it could be. Thomas is talking to the painting again. Maybe I can listen in with my super sensitive roguish powers of eavesdropping. The paladin tomb, tomb in the catacombs was beautiful. The murals showed the day you defeated the dragon, the day you were proclaimed the protector of Sardonia. I know you don't approve of elaborate funerals or ostentation ceremonies, but the paladin memorial to you is inspiring. It's just a shame that it's hidden in the depths of the catacombs. It's so dangerous down there. They've locked the entrance away from the city. I couldn't get permission to see it. For once, my rogue skills came in useful as I snuck past the city guards and picked the lock on the gate. I made sure to secure the lock after I was gone. It seems wrong to deliberately respect, disrespect authority like that, but no one was endangered by my actions except for me. I guess I'm starting to think like a rogue. Oh, hello, Sean. Hi, hey, Thomas. Good evening, Sean. Fancy meeting you here again. So how are things going for you today? Quite well, thank you. We've made it through the first half of the semester and I feel like I'm actually starting to understand what it means to be a rogue. So have you figured out whether being a rogue is a good thing or not? I don't know yet. I guess it all depends on, upon how much good I can do with the skills. So far, I haven't done anything to justify myself as a hero. I'm sure you'll find a way to prove that rogues can be heroes. See you around, Thomas. I'll see you. Poor Thomas. Alright, let's go to the rec room, say hi to everyone there, play some games, that fun stuff. Katie and Esme are talking about the sea caves. They sound like they're over by the fireplace. Oh, and it sounds like Aeolus is playing his pipes in there. So what about you? Do you have any plans for your future? I am happy here. It is first place that seemed like home to me. It's so nice to have true, true friends like you. Never really had any friends growing up. It's a new experience for me to have friends I can rely upon and trust. So I get what you mean.
No sign of them. Joel and Sosie, but let's say hi to these three. Alright, you're looking good today. Careful, you'll make Sosie jealous. Who cares what Sosie thinks? I'm more interested in your opinion than his. Thanks for all the help you gave me in the sea caves. Congratulations on your treasure hunt. You are a first-rate piratey matey now. Aye, and I'll belay any who belies my pirate savvy. See you tomorrow, sweet dreams. Catch you in class. Let's see how good we are at darts now. How would you like to play a game of darts with me? Okay, but I'll warn you, I'm the best dart player around. I win. Told you I was good at this game. Okay, you win. I admit it. You are really good at this game. Hi, Esme. Oh, you look so good now. People may think you must be a very important person. You think so? Thanks. I was hoping I could get your approval for wearing this. There you go. Dress well and everybody wants to comment on it. It's thrilling that Katie got her treasure, isn't it? So are you jealous that Katie's now rich? I do not want to be rich. Not that I would mind it. I'm happy for Katie, not because of money, but because after all hard work and danger, she did it. She will follow her dreams. So what are your dreams? When I first came here, all I wanted from the future was a cottage, a family, and someone special at my side so I could be safe and never travel again. Now, I do not know. Maybe my dreams were too small. Maybe my future can be much more special. I shall think on it. You wouldn't believe how dangerous and difficult it was to get to the pirate treasure. That's there's a reason no one's stolen it before. We barely got back alive to tell the tale. It was very brave of both of you, and very sweet of you to brave all those dangers just to help Katie. You are a good hero, Sean. Yeah, that's me, the good hero. I don't know, Summer, you need better friends, clearly. This is the norm, people just complimenting your appearance whenever you change it up a bit. Katie is a very determined woman. She's not only she's not about to give up until she got her treasure. I don't know if she's incredibly brave or just incredibly stubborn. Eh, yeah, Katie is both. Good night, Esme. Dream a little dream of me. I will try not to have nightmare. Ouch! Harsh, Esme. Hey, Esme, you want to play cards? I am very good with cards. You would have to be very good to win this game. I win. You play very well. It was a good game. Nice play. I admit my defeat by you, Sean. Woo! I won a game. Granted, she's not the cards expert, but... Isn't she beautiful in the firelight? Katie, I mean. Here we go again. How's it going, Aeolus? There's a kind of rush all over this room tonight. Because in this room, I can see the sight of the woman I love. Yes, Joel is the cards expert. Who are you in love with now? Why, the saucy sea maid herself, Katie. If you're so attracted to Katie, go and talk to her. She's right over there. I'm hoping she'll love my music so much that she'll turn to look at me. Our eyes will meet and our souls will dance with joy as we exchange our hearts. Just go over there and talk to her or sing to her or whatever. Let her know how you feel. Now's your chance. It doesn't bother me to perform my music before a crowded audience. I can busk with the best of bards. I can't stand in the spotlight and sing out. I can stand in the spotlight and sing out my soul. But the minute I try to talk to someone I really like, I get all tongue-tied and flustered. Maybe sometime this evening she'll come over and speak to me. Maybe you could talk to her here and let her know how I feel. <sighs> Aeolus. Look, you have to be the one to talk to Katie. You have to prove to her how much you care for her. I can't do that for you. I know, you're right. I just have to get up the nerve. So how was your midterm vacation? My father yelled at me the whole time that I should learn a practical trade like seamanship or CPA. My stepmother complained that I was lazy and eating them out of house and home. In other words... It was a typical time at home. Good night. It's a wonderful night. I'm in the presence of the sweetest, sauciest woman I have ever met. 
Uh, that's cool, Aeolus. Do you want to play some cards? Would you like to play cards with me? I'm not very good at cards, but I'll be happy to play a few hands of cribbage with you. I win. Lucky you. I warned you I wasn't very good at playing cards. Oh, hey. I have, uh, this book of love ballads. I came across this old love ballad book and thought you might like it. Oh my gosh, is that a genuine copy of Wilde's Ballads, a collection of the greatest ballads ever written? Thank you! With this book, I should be able to sing the finest songs ever sung by mortal man! You're welcome, Aeolus. Aeolus is hopeless. Absolutely hopeless. Let's practice our card theory. So it seems that a good fold is as important as a win, sometimes more important. Curfew! Out of here at once! This recreation will cease! Everyone return to your dorm room immediately! I will be watching you! That kitty is something special, isn't she? She's spicy and salty and really cute, too. Hey, Aeolus. Sounds like you've got a crush on Katie now. A crush? More like she's got me sailing on the clouds above a dawn-studded sea. She's the captain of my heart! Aren't you going overboard a bit with this? I see you don't appreciate my metaphor if you assail my sea sun imagery. So it's Katie you're in love with now, is it? How could I not be? She's smart and strong and unafraid to say what she thinks. She's the sort of woman for whom you would sail the seven seas to win her love. I wrote her a song about it. Kitty, kitty, I'll seal the sea with you. Be my first matey, tell me that you'll be true. We can't sail the way we ought. I can't afford a yacht. But away we'll float on our rowboat as we row on the ocean blue. What do you think? Will she like it? Um... Um, I think she'll find the so song first mate, or uh, rate. Right. Sean, please help me. Talk to Katie and see if she likes me, if only a little. Now, the options here, agree, tell him to talk to her for himself, or say that I love Katie. I'm going to go with the middle ground here. I'm sorry, Aeolus, but the only person who should speak to Katie about you is you. I'll try talking to with her tomorrow. Good night. If you're going to spend the whole night thinking about Katie's songs, try working on the lyrics rather than the melody, please. It's less noisy. I'll try not to compose during my repose while Katie floats in the love boats of my dreams. Good, uh, good work, Aeolus. Let's see if there's any conversations going on. Nothing here, but let's listen anyway. Nope, all quiet. Well, we don't really have enough time to do any training tonight, so... Let's just uh, go over our class notes with a good student. Let's see if I can read my own handwriting and actually learn something. And to bed. As I was saying, and that is how using your Houdini 42 you can open the more complex locks. Tool use goes up, yay. It was an excellent demonstration of the deft use of the Houdini Master. Any further questions or comments? Let's be polite. So with the Houdini 42 in our lockpicks, will we be able to unlock any locker safe? Most, but not all. Some of you may have noticed that the lock on my office is particularly tricky. 
It uses a magical key to thwart would-be intruders. Magical locks cannot be opened with conventional rogue tools. Are there unconventional rogue tools? Indeed there are, Hale Connor. However, we will not be covering such items in this semester. The locks on the western north wall of the lock room now have the complex locks upon which for you to practice these new techniques. I also strongly suggest that you read the book on advanced tool use tips in the library. It will help you identify and unlock even the most complex locks. I remind those of you who have chosen to take electives that your next class will be at 3 this afternoon. Class dismissed. I think I got a quest out of that with the tech. I got an aside here. Gerhard spent part of class writing angrily something that he clearly did not want people in class to see. Now I'm curious to know what it was. And I have to go read the advanced tool use book. Let's stop by and say hi to Joel first. You are looking particularly distinguished today, Mr. O'Connor. Leather is a very good look for you. If it's true that clothes make the man, then I clearly am a made man. How are things going for you? Better than they were last week, fortunately for us all. See you later. Good day to you. Pay him a compliment on the way out. It always makes my day better when I get the chance to talk to you. It isn't just that I'm useful to you that you speak with me. Joel, we're friends, right? I like you. Butter up, butter up. My relationship's here. I'm now BFFs with Katie. Quite good friends with uh, many people. And Cesare Sosi does not hate me. This is the biggest failing of this playthrough. Let's listen to the classroom door here. See, I think without the itching powder, I may have missed my chance to get Sosie to hate me, which is kind of amazing because he's so horrible. There's a neat stack of unused stationery in the top drawer of his desk, but no written letters or anything interesting to see here. And of course, all the other drawers in this desk are locked. Let's take a look at the stationery. Hmm, I can see the impression of the pen marks from the last thing the master wrote. I wonder if there's some way to read what's written here. Maybe if I rub it with chalk, I can make out the words. Oh, interesting. I'll have to show this to Mr. Turk. Yep, that's right. I now have to... Uh... Well, I now can show the suspicious scribbling... to Turk. Uh, Gerhard was writing something down in class and uh, Sean thought it was suspicious and now he thinks that Turk should, uh, should see it. Let's put on our school uniform. So that we can talk to Turk. Why couldn't this be one of those ranch dog castles? Ah, uh, see ya, Voyaging Moon. Thanks so much for coming by. And for once, well, going to save because I only have half an hour before class. I have something you'll want to see. It's a copy of a letter written by Gerhard. Well, let me see it! I think this is better shown in private. Very well then, we shall go to my office, but you better not be wasting my time. Now, let me see what you have to show me. I noticed that the master was writing something secretly in class. He took the letter with him when he left, but he left the impression of his letter on the stationery. So I took a chalk rubbing of the stationery. I thought you'd be very interested in what it says. How you got it is irrelevant. Let me have it. Here you go, sir. Hmm. It's hard to read Gerhard's archaic handwriting. 
My dear headmaster, as I have mentioned to you in previous conversations, Herr Turk is unfit for his position at this school. He constantly criticizes and demeans students with his pompous, ignorant arrogance. Pompous arrogance? Me? Why, Gerhard is the very epitome of arrogance. This is insufferable. I'll let the headmaster know just how ridiculous these accusations are. You will mention this letter to no one. No one, you understand? Of course, sir. I understand that you might not want students to know that Gerhard thinks you're pompous. Get out! Get out of here now! Yes, sir. Happy to go. So worth being slightly late to science class, isn't it? Mind you, I don't actually have uh, ingredients to do much science today. Today, we are going to discuss thermodynamics. This is the science of everything that has to do with heating and blowing things up. We are now at the forefront of the practical application of scientific principles into the field of mechanical engineering. We are just now realizing the potential of the steam-powered engine to launch mankind and womankind and katakind and all the other various peoples of the world into the future. Before we get started with the study of steam-powered systems, are there any comments or questions? Well, I know what I want to know about. Are we going to get to blow things up today? Well, considering that we'll be dealing with steam-powered engines, I sincerely hope not. After the steam-powered demonstration, you will have the rest of class to work on your personal scientific experiments. Let's get started. Alright, so I don't have ingredients for flash powder handy. So we'll just make some gooey. And some more gooey. And even more gooey. It's almost time for dinner. I better get there before the food's all gone. Let's take a detour. It's not like anything's going on in the rec room right now. Probably because everyone's at dinner. If I play my cards right, I bet I can raise my game. It's pretty clear that in cards, the deadly sin is to mistake bad play for bad luck. All right, to dinner. Turk's gone. I should put on my nice fancy protective clothes now. Welcome back, Summer. Let's see what today's menu is the cuisine of Belle France. Salade Lyonnaise, Coq au, au, au vin, and Clafouti, whatever. They do feed us well at this place. Oh, and I should go and grab another apple. I haven't done that. In a little while. And I think I need to go grab some more scientific ingredients anyway, so, uh... Time to go poking around in the sea caves some. Because I know I'm out of sulfur. I think I have all the phosphorus I need. 
let's double check that I have charcoal. Leave an apple for our friend the cork. Look at that, I am as charming as it gets. And as perceptive. I don't actually remember all the places where sulfur can be harvested, so I'm going to be wandering around slightly aimlessly dodging things. Not dodging well enough. I think there's... Well, okay, you can get surprisingly far in the game in terms of stuff going on by not ever doing anything, any kind of exploration whatsoever. And yeah, it didn't didn't give me the autosave, so that hurt. So, next time I'll save. Um, but there are, like, if you actually undertake some of the quests, you need to have certain minimum levels of specific stats, so it depends on the stat. I definitely looted that chest. Okay, you're saving. And it's true, definitely uh, some of the tests. Here we go, here's some sulfur. Let's take as much as we can. All right. I am now restocked on scientific ingredients. True, yes, you need enough lockpicking to pass the lockpicking test, so... Yeah, some stats are optional. Some stats, if you don't train them, you need to train other things to compensate, and some stats are mandatory. Lockpicking is definitely not optional. It's already past curfew. I think I'm still going to go very sneakily. Let's see if I can break into the library. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? First, it's quiet in there, too quiet, but then again, aren't all libraries? This lock is no match for me. There, it's unlocked. Time to sneakily slip inside. Well, since I'm sneakily in here, I should uh, look at the desk here. It looks like a regular desk. It has a bunch of big drawers, nothing fancy, well-worn. There's a folder full of papers on the top. So what does the librarian hide in his desk? There's some old books, a folder, paper, an ink pot, and a vase with a fragrant mint in it. I guess the librarian gets tired of the smell of old books. These books are in terrible condition. The pages are practically falling out. Maybe the librarian secretly hates books and is systematically ripping them apart when no one is looking? Probably not. That'd be too much too interesting for him. 
Boy, his handwriting is tiny and neat. I need a magnifying glass to really read this. Papers all seem to be on which books need mending or replacing. How boring can that be? Let's see, there's actually not much in here. A couple ink wells, some basic ink quills, a stack of blank parchment. Oh, look at this mysterious leather case. I bet it's full of nefarious devices. It has some brushes, scissors, and a small wooden plank, a few leather strips, a small craft blade. Oh, and there's some gooey. He won't miss just a bit. I guess this explains the damaged books on his desk. He uses this stuff to repair them as part of his job. Seems like an awful lot of work, though. I can see why he gets so touchy about people mistreating them. I really hope to find something juicy here, but the librarian apparently has no personal life at all. How dull. Oh, how about over here? Hmm, this clock isn't working. I wonder why it's here, then. Nothing in here but clock parts. Unless, let me see. Aha! Wait, no. Oops. Under closer examination, I see nothing but clock parts. I think I'll just stuff everything back in and close the door if I can. How about behind the portrait here? There's a couple of scratches on the wall. Those could have come from anything. That's about it. The whole idea of the world being round is pretty new. I don't know why they make globes look so old. That's cute. Doesn't want to spin. What a tease. Anyone who saw me sneak out with this globe would think I was with child. So you're just not going to do it, Sean. Come on. How about this portrait? There's something really unpleasant about this painting. It feels like worms writhing in my belly and ice water running down my back. I don't want to get near it. I don't want to get near the painting, let alone actually touch it. I suppose Sean thinks people might suspect if it, if he suddenly appeared to be pregnant that he'd been, uh, I don't know, flirting with the wrong people. All right, time to go. A little late to do our actual assigned reading. Time to go to bed. The sneaky way. How exciting, Summer. Get a chance to see Katie today? She's so special. Hi, Aeolus. Still crazy for Katie, I see. She's the only girl for me. Here's a song I wrote last night about her. Of all the fine ladies upon this great land, for me, Katie, I'll sail on the sea. There's one who's the finest and ever so grand. There's none to compare with Bonnie Katie. Twas at Hero U where I first caught the sight. For me, Katie, I'll see it sail on the sea. I guess it's for me, Katie. Well, for the woman who fills me with joy and delight, there's none to compare with a bonny Katie. She sat in the rec room, twas her turn to deal. For me, Katie, I'll sail on the sea. For my money she won and my heart she did steal. There's none to compare with bonny Katie. What do you think? Will Katie be blown away by it? Ah, uh, there'll never be a better shanty for Katie. Try and get some rest, Aeolus. Well, we're gonna take it some rest anyhow. As I was saying, we have previously discussed the difference between rogues and thieves. Today we shall delve into the history of thieves' guilds and the origin of rogue guilds. Some of you have strong connections to thieves' guilds, so you should find this particularly interesting. Am I correct, Herr Kiro? 
Oh, yes, indeed. My father was a very respected and high-ranking member of the Samaria Thieves' Guild. Long ago, there were no thieves' guilds. Thieves plagued cities and towns. They were constantly getting caught, killed, or maimed by authorities. They were totally on their own and could trust no one. Then along came a very clever thief who called himself the Jackdaw. He stole many valuables and found a reliable fence with whom to sell his goods. He recruited other competent thieves to work for him on specific heists. In short, he became the first guildmaster. The Jackdaw organized and gathered thieves. Eventually, he had so many thieves who wanted to work for him that he designated lieutenants to be in charge of different groups. To each of his lieutenants, he gave a valuable statue of a black bird. The statues became symbols of authority for guild leaders. He who holds a statue is considered to be a king of thieves. However, the black bird statues in the position of king were so coveted, they were frequently stolen, copied, and hidden away. My father searched for the black bird for many years. Indeed, your father and his compatriot found the original black bird statue at one time. However, before they could claim the crown, another person stole it. That person claimed the title of King of Thieves. Then he did a very interesting thing. Instead of ruling over the various guilds and turning them into a very effective crime organization, he disappeared with the statue. In Silmaria, the guilds now have no central leadership and are compete against each other. They are more like gangs than guilds now. So why would someone steal a valuable object and claim the kingship of many, only to vanish and leave the Thieves' Guild to fall into chaos? When is a thief not a thief? Was the new King of Thieves really a rogue? Yes, the last King of Thieves in Samaria was indeed a rogue. He didn't want the thieves to get too powerful and dangerous, so he took away their symbol of power. Samaria has no King of Thieves and no one crew Thieves' Guild. The same is true of Sardonia. The Black Bird statue of Sardonia is called the Raven. The statue united all the thieves in one guild under one leader called the Raven. However, the last Raven in Sardonia passed away and the statue has not been seen since then. Several minor guilds formed since then, but there is no Raven of Thieves in Sardonia. What happened to the Raven? Do you know, sir? The, the Raven of Sardonia realized that he, too, was more of a rogue than a thief. He was preparing to disband his united kingdom. Unfortunately, he met with an untimely accident. He had hidden the Raven statue, and no one has since found it. The numerous thieves' guilds of Somaria squabble and compete, each claiming ownership of the Raven statue, but no one proving their claim. Even in death, the last Raven of Thieves in Sardonia accomplished his goal to stop thieves from becoming too powerful. So how do you know all this? Is there some sort of roguish conspiracy going on to break up thieves' guilds or something? I will only say that I knew both the King of Thieves in Somaria and the Raven of Sardonia personally. Tomorrow's lesson will be upon occupational hazards and how to avoid them. Dismissed. That's interesting, isn't it? Interesting. What did you think of today's lecture about thieves and ravens? Interesting, no? So your father was a member of a thieves guild? Oh yes, though he preferred to think of himself more as an acquirer of unique items than as a thief. I guess he'd be pretty proud of you right now. You're the best acquirer of unique things at this university. I would like to think so. What do you know about the black bird? My father spent his whole life searching for it. He found the real one a couple of times, but someone brutally stole it before he could get his hands on it. I came here to Sardonia to search for the raven here. I wish to succeed where my father did not. Nah. Do you have anything new for sale? Ah yes, I came across something very special you might be interested in owning. A necramulet. It protects against the undead. This can be very useful if you choose to explore the catacombs. That's true at that. Bye for now. Take care of yourself. You look so serious today. You should smile more often. There has been a lot on my mind lately. However, I am happy to speak with you. I think I am, in fact, going to pick up a necramulet. Sean rude for telling him to smile. Hey, fair. Let's 
do a little bit of lock picking. Another complex lock. This is even tougher than the last lock. That does the trick. Getting that tool use up there. I'm more okay with Sean's flirting with Joel being a little bit yeah, because you can't flirt with him until you get to be a certain amount of connected with him. Some of his comments about Esme and Katie, on the other hand, are gross. Alright, let's go to science class. Today, we're going to make use of our studies in physics and chemistry to create a projectile that ignites upon impact, causing a minor explosion. I call this projectile flambe. Flambe can be used in combat to set the sails of an incoming ship on fire or to defeat a particularly pesky monster. You'll need to be careful handling it around flammable material or wooden buildings. All flambe takes is an empty wine bottle, some phosphorus, alcohol, charcoal, saltpeter, sailcloth, and naphtha. It is important to use extreme caution when working with flambe. The headmaster insists that anyone who sets someone on fire in this class will be promptly expelled. Keep in mind that you must throw the flambe at least two meters or you might ignite your own clothing. Any questions before we get started? Are you saying that a flambe is something that catches fire after you throw the bottle and breaks against something? Correct! We will be going over the mathematical formula for the amount of force required to shatter the glass and ignite the liquid. I suggest that students do not try to use flambe outside the classroom environment unless you have prior mastery of the skill of throwing odd-shaped objects like bottles. Now, let us get started with the flambe incendiary experiment, shall we? Wee, Blowing things up. Almost dinner time. Let's uh, pop into the game room, play some games. Keep our hand in. Nothing on. Practice our cards. This would be so much easier if Gregor sold marked cards. No, Sean, it wouldn't. Because if Gregor sold marked cards, everyone would buy them. Except Thomas. Thomas wouldn't buy them. He'd just always lose Pooba. Mm, that's true, Aeolus might not either. But Katie definitely would. Sosie would. Joel would, and then he'd mark them slightly differently just to throw everyone off. When it comes to graveyards, it just goes to show you, ghoul me once, shame on boo. Ghoul me twice, it's too much. No more ghoul fiend jokes, please. How about after a brush with death, things get very hairy in the catacombs? What do catas have to do with graveyards? Um, catacombs, catacombs, get it? No. Anyway, before the two clowns here started making jokes about it, I was saying I managed to open the gate to the catacombs with the new lock techniques we just learned. There is this gate. It's in the sea caves, to the west of the main entrance. Dinner time is officially over! Clean up your places and get out!
Now I have... Still got a quest to go read that advanced tool use book. And my tool use is slightly too low to open that one chest in the catacombs, so... I have a good reason to want to do it anyway. So let's pop in here. Thomas is around, might as well say hi. So did you see anything interesting on the midterm break? I found the Paladin Memorial in the Caligari Catacombs. Unfortunately, I had to break into the catacombs to see it. The main entrance of the catacombs from the city is locked and guarded because there have been instances of undead roaming the halls of the dead. There's supposed to be an entrance to the catacombs from the sea caves. I'm going to try to find it. The entrance to the catacombs isn't that hard to find in the sea caves once you know where to look. Just go right around the walls of the first section, down to a lower section, back up again, and then head left to the entrance. Thanks, I thought I'd have to do a lot of exploring to find it. Well, the lock on the catacomb store is a tricky one. You may have to work on that. I guess I'll have to work on my lockpicking skills some more then. So, have you read any good books to help in dangerous situations? I've been studying the book that Master Von Orvald recommended, Advanced Tool Use Tips. I didn't realize there were so many different types of locks before I read it. Where can I find it? It's on the middle shelf of the Disbarred Bard section. It's a dull brown book with a key design on the spine. Thanks, Thomas. See you tomorrow. Good night, Sean. Let's read that book. Advanced tool use tips. How have I never noticed this here before? So we covered this a bit in class, I should be able to understand it enough to study it. Who knew there were so many different types of locks? Hardy, Drew, Columbo, it's hard to keep them all straight. However, the Houdini 42 turns out to be the crucial tool for opening any advanced lock. Either that, or the Houdini company wrote this book. So, quest done. Tool use over 90. Whoa. So I think there's still enough time in the day to do a little bit of poking around in the catacombs. Possibly not all the poking around I want to do, but that one chest is bugging me. So I'll go for that first. Save early, save often. Go through the noble room. scatters to dodge here and they can be annoying. Yep, I muffed that. <laughs> Time to make like a dryad and leave? Okay. Okay. I accept that that pun was a good one. load. As 
since I'm thinking of it, I should put on the Necramulet. Gives me 50 resistance to the effects of the undead, but makes me less charming. to do that. That one isn't even close, I just clicked on it. That's annoying. Do this again. Build the right the save so that I don't have to keep doing that. Dodge. Let's come up this way. Here's my goal. Red. Let's go right. Save here. Let's, uh, let's go try the chest first. I think that's up in the shadow room. Sneak, sneak, sneak. No, I didn't mean to. Damn it, I hit load instead of a right. I am clearly not functioning in full. Oh well. Back to the shadow room. Try that again. This time without muffing the buttons. I knew I was going to do that eventually. I was actually more worried about doing it the other way around. Hit overwrite when I mean to hit load and end up. in the absolute best situation of saving the game while dying. save. Alright, Tricky Lock, here I come. Ah, yes, you're no match for my skills, Lock. I should really hope not, because I think my tool use is at 92 now. I hope this chest is worth all the effort it took to open it. Okay, there's a rusty dagger that looks like it was the murder weapon in some very old mystery book. The skull of some large animal. And some rotten cloth that may or may not have been stained with blood. Wrapped in the cloth is a container of something nasty. It's a vial of vial. Under the skull looks like some sort of runestone. It's a red tile with some sort of flame symbol on it. There are some scattered coins on the bottom of the chest. They're stuck to the bottom in what I hope isn't dried blood or poison. And that runestone would be incredibly useful if I were trying to kill things. 
but I'm not, so it isn't. Still not. I looted the chest and that's the main thing. And it's not even curfew yet. Down to Fred here. Save again. The other thing we got is the password to the crypt, so let's knock. Password. Is it Pesca Spada? Keep your voice down. Get in here. Well, looky here, boys. See what walked into our lair. It's the hair apparent. You want to buy something or does you want information? I got both, but they're going to cost you. Let's see what he's got for sale. Now most of what he's got, it's, it's again, it's like Joel. You can get it earlier here. But more expensive. Let's see if I can offload any of this stuff I don't need. These runestones don't sell for anything, it's downright insulting. All right, that's enough. So what do you want now? It's gonna cost you 10 lira for the first question. After that, my price goes up. Answers don't grow on trees. So put your money down and ask away. And I'll find things out for myself. Sit yourself, kid. But I got answers to questions you don't even have yet. You know where to come when you get it. Well, what's over here? Looks like a standard catacombs crypt door to me, but it doesn't have a memorial plaque by it. It doesn't look like it's sealed or locked, and the skeletal guards don't seem to mind that I'm here at the door. You listening at that door? All you gotta hear is dead silence. <laughs> Let's check it out. Whoa, what is this place? Interesting, this wreath hasn't been here very long. It's just starting to dry out and it's not co covered with a layer of dust. There's a tag on the wreath that says, To my beloved brother Donald, may you be at peace, Seamus. Huh. So my uncle recently brought this here for my father. Maybe for the Knights of the Dead. Right, steal something from a thief memorial. That would be ironic. It would also be moronic carrying a stolen wreath around the catacombs. It reads, in memoriam, Donald O'Connor, the Raven of Sardonia. Wait, what? My father really was the Raven of Sardonia? I did it! I found the Raven statue. Somehow, I just don't think this is the right statue. Pity that. So according to the plaque, the statue is a memorial to my father. My father, the Raven of Sardonia. My father, the thief. This room is Donald's memorial, but I don't see a sarcophagus. I guess he wasn't buried here. Could he still be alive? If so, I have a lot of things to say to him. Not all of it will be polite. Yeah, well, my mother and Uncle Seamus seem to think my father was dead. He probably did die years ago. 
I get the feeling that the raven is watching me, like it's expecting something. It's practically taunting me. Hey, maybe it's not a raven at all. Maybe it's a mocking jay. I don't think that... I think that if I could push this entire memorial to the side, I'd find a hidden stairway that leads to a secret thieves' guild where my father's been hiding all these years, ruling in secret. It doesn't budge. It really is solid rock. It was only wis wishful thinking on my part. The plaque says, Donald and Seamus O'Connor with the Raven of Sardonia. My father and his brother holding the Raven statue. My father must really have been the King of Thieves. I could have been a Prince of Thieves. If only he hadn't died. I look a lot like my father. Mama always told me that, but now I can see it for myself. I really wish I could talk to him right now. I have so many questions to ask. How did he die? Was he really murdered? What happened to the Raven statue? I have missed my father all my life, and yet I have no idea who or what he really was. How cool would it be to find a secret door behind the painting that led to my father's secret chamber? Maybe he'd still be there waiting for me, where he's been hiding all this time. I could yell at him for leaving us all these years, for leaving us with so many questions. But no, there's only a solid wall behind the painting. Wait, there's something stuck on the back of the painting. It's a folded note tucked away in the frame. What? It's a letter addressed to me from my father. It says, Sean, my dearest son. There's so much I need to tell you when you grow up, but there's none of us can see the future. It's dangerous times, and I may not be here when you are a man. I'll tell you plain, you gotta do what needs to be done, no matter what. In Ire, my brother Seamus and I, we fought to free our homeland from the tyranny of Albion. It had to be done. That made us outlaws in the eyes of the Queen's men. We had no choice but to flee Ire with the greatest of treasures, your mother Nora. Alas, in Sardonia there was not for us but to be beggars or thieves. You do what you must, so I tried to be the best of thieves was cruel and vicious work. The king of thieves, the raven, took the best of every theft. He let his followers starve. He was just another tyrant who needed to be taken down. And take him down I did. I became the raven of Sardonia. I was as fair to my people as I could be. We thieves grew strong and powerful. It was said that I ruled Sardonia more than the prince. Nora, though, she hated every what I did. Thieves is thieves, she said. There's no good to come with them. I didn't listen. I was blinded by power and could not see the harm I was doing to this land. Then a former chief thief from another land came to me and told me to open my eyes. As the thieves grew stronger, the land suffered. Traitors stayed away. Children were starving. People lived in fear. I had become a tyrant, too. You gotta do what needs to be done. I now will end this kingdom of thieves. There will be no raven to rule in Sardonia from here on. I will make things right. Whatever happens from this point on, I hope you're well and happy. Take care of your mother for me. I know that your Uncle Seamus will be watching over you. I love you, Sean. Your father, Donald. I guess my father really did love me. I wish I'd gotten to know him better. No way would I steal that painting. I don't really want to see my father's smiling face turn proud and smug at me like that. It makes me feel angry and sad at the same time. We had a journal update there. Letter from my father. So my father was a freedom fighter, a thief, and king of the thieves. Then he tried to make sure no one else would ever be king of thieves again. I guess he succeeded at that. I don't know how he died. I don't really know what to think about him right now. I guess he really did love me. I just feel sad and miss him more than ever. Aw, oh, Sean. Alright, time to be getting back. It's late. Sean needs his beauty to sleep. Never gonna be able to flirt properly with all those people if he isn't sufficiently beautiful. Have a new save. That bit of sneaking is always kind of tricky.
All right, let's see how things are going with Aeolus. Kitty says I'm not her type. You'll get over her, Aeolus. I'm sure that you'll find the right person for you. So Katie Keel hauled your heart and scuttled your dream boat. Clearly she's too brined to see how shellfish she's acting towards you. She must be hard of herring to not be hooked by your singing. You are the cod of song whiting. You should stop playing and try to get some sleep. You'll feel much better in the morning. Go to sleep, Aeolus. It'll be better tomorrow. This is an old wanted poster with my father's name on it. The O'Connor Brothers. Wanted for anarchy, insurrection, and crimes against Her Majesty's army. Reward, 1,000 crowns, leading to their arrest. Her Majesty's army? This must be why my father left Iris. So my father was a rebel fighting for Irish freedom. Huh. My uncle looks familiar. I wonder if I've seen him before. Curious, very curious. I know Aeolus is. Well, he's running low on women to fall in love with in this castle, so. As I was saying, in the first quarter of this semester, we discussed tools and techniques on how to survive in dangerous situations. Most of you have faced real life-threatening danger during the course of this class. Normal people, when confronted by what you have faced, would have run off and never returned. Yet here you are, prepared to face danger and spit in its eye, so to speak. You are all risk-takers by your very nature, and given the choice between two paths, you do not automatically choose the safest. Sometimes the most dangerous path is the most rewarding. It can also get you killed. To win the title of Rogue of the Year, you must be willing to take risks. You must also be clever enough to survive the risks you take. I am not afraid to take risks, and I am clearly the cleverest person in this room, excepting yourself, of course, Master. I will be the rogue of the year. Right, as far as I can tell, Sosie, the only risk you're willing to take is opening your mouth wide enough to stick your foot in it. So, Katie, the pirate's daughter, you think you can ever come close to being my equal? The best you'll ever be is a tavern wench or gallows bait when you get out of here. Hmm. I think I gotta go after Sosie here. Sosie, you're a lily livered lick boot lying drat who'd sell your own grandmother for a lira. Yeah, you talk big, but you do nothing. The only title you deserve is Rotter of the Year. Enough! I have no more insults or insinuations in this classroom, or you'll all risk my wrath. I assure you, you do not want to make me angry. Since you have wasted so much class time in useless bickering, you now have the assignment to write an essay on the subject Risk and Reward, the importance of friendship and cooperation. I expect it first thing tomorrow morning. You are dismissed. Hooray, I have homework. Let's talk to Joel. You look dapper today. Why, thank you. I pride myself on making a good impression with people. Nothing to actually discuss there. Speaking of the master, let's see if he's in. It's good to periodically see if I can talk to him about, uh, oh, you know, things like Turk. Let's go pick some locks. Looks like a French frustrating Columbo class, another complex lock. And another lock succumbs to my superior skill. Oh, let's do the difficult trap. It's a trap! I've always wanted to say that. 
Now, as it's a difficult trap, it's just possible. That it's actually easy to guess. That did it. It's an X trap. Ha, so much for that tough trap. And the trap just reset. So much for all my hard work to solve it. Alright, to science class. I'd like to think this means I'm a rising star in my class. Dodge and Turks for fun and profit, but mostly fun. Yesterday, we used the principles of thermodynamics to create flambe. Now we are going to take this formula a little further. We are going to distill the volatile substances of flambe, being very careful not to ignite the liquid. Once the liquid has been purified and concentrated, we will add additional phosphorus and sulfur to the mix. This will give us a substance I call Geek Fire. This baby burns with a heat that will melt lead like butter. When Geek Fire is thrown onto the floor or a monster, it splashes damage in a 2 meter area. It will continue to burn for 3 minutes afterwards. You'll need to be very careful dealing with Geek Fire. One careless move and you'll be toast. Are there any questions before we get started? You really enjoy your job, don't you, Dr. B? I never realized that science could be such fun. There is no greater thrill in life than that of formulating your first hypothesis and then verifying its veracity. Those of you who pursue the magnetic attraction to scientific studies will exult in intellectual stimulus and scholarly satisfaction. Very well, everyone, let's do some science. Yeah, geek fire. Talk about burn. My stomach's starting to growl. Better hurry off to the dining hall sometime soon. Eh, hey, you'll live, Sean. Stats are okay, but they can be better. And significantly, I could be much more lucky. Let's work on that. Unfortunately, I can't learn their tells by practicing alone. Yeah, leave it at that. Go to dinner. For food prepared by a bunch of students, it's good stuff. Probably better than most restaurants that I've never eaten at. Let's go grab us an apple. For good friends with the quirk, I'd like to be buddies with the quirk. say hi to Ikutaya while I'm in here. I haven't talked to him in a while. I 
A storm is coming, Mr. Sean Sean. The nights of the dead, they are dark sun. In the future, it will be even darker. You best be watching yourself. What's up? More than you know, Sean. More than I can tell. Why can't you just tell me what it is you want me to do? I am not your master, Mr. Sean Sean. I am not your boss. You do what you want to do. All I can say is that your path is shadowed. Watch your steps. So what's your take on all this, Riki? Riki, she be just a little quitter. When bad things come, Riki, she be hiding. Riki, she's not a hero like Sean. What's going on with the Knights of the Dead? Isn't it just a few ghosts floating around for a few nights? The dead of this land, they rest uneasily. They don't forget the past. They don't forgive the past. Soon the gate between the worlds will open and the dead will come through. Now most duppies, they are not bad. They just got something they need to do or say. Once they do that, they can go back to the Greylands. Some duppies, though, they can be very bad. They envy the living so much they want the living to die. What's a duppy? The good duppies, you would be calling them ghosts. You call the bad duppies wraiths. This castle, it is protected against the wraiths. The duppies you meet in the castle, they mean you no harm. But when you are not in the castle, you best not let the bad duppies get you. They suck out your life and pull you down into their grave. That's cheerful. See you both later. Oh, Dabo, Mr. Shanshan. Bye bye for now! She's such a positive, optimistic sort of person, isn't she? Let's see if there's any eavesdropping to be done today. Guess not. Check on Thomas just in case. Nope, nothing there, okay. Let's go to the library. I've been neglecting my studies. So we look at stats I can improve here. Most of it's, um, I could be smarter and I could be, I could have more moxie. And I can get better at both of those. With the book about risk taking. Maybe I can learn something more about Daring Do. The book says that you should never give up, never surrender. Full speed ahead. And let's study some more. Book emphasizes using willpower to accomplish any goal. Huh, that sounds a lot like Moxie. See, there we go. I'm smarter and more Moxified. As far as I know, that doesn't actually have a significant impact on this homework assignment, but, uh... It seemed like a good time to do some reading on the topic. I hear Kiro saying something about the catacombs and Sosi sneering at it. Interesting. You should come with me to the catacombs, Cesaro. You can see for yourself why there are rumors of treasure there and why it is so dangerous. Why would I want to accompany you to a graveyard when you can easily do it for yourself? But Cesare, there are many places in the catacombs where I do not dare to venture by myself. But together, you and I... We'll talk about this later. Connor just came in. And you just want to say hi to me because you're so friendly, right, Susie? Right? I have no interest in talking to you. How about you, Joel? 
Over the midterm break, I heard a story about the Raven that you might be interested in hearing. So you're still looking for the Raven? Yes, I am certain the Raven statue was deliberately hidden somewhere by the late Raven of Caligari, who ruled from the warehouse where the Con Games Thieves Guild currently meets. The fact that the Raven statue is still missing after all these years leads me to believe that it is not in the Ca Con Games Guild Hall. One rumor claimed it was hidden in the catacombs, so I will do some investigating there. What was that about a story? I spoke to some elderly gentleman in a rather seedy tavern. He told me a tale of two brothers. It's that many years ago, the thieves of Sardonia were controlled by the raven and his brother. Sadly, the brother became jealous of the raven's power, so the brother had the raven murdered. However, the raven had known of his brother's jealousy, and so hid the statue where his brother would never find it. And that is why there is no raven of Sardonia now. Good night, Joel. A pleasant evening to you as well, Sean. Let's see if Joel will play some cards with us. Would you like to play cards with me? It should be very entertaining to play cards with you. That is game, is it not? I believe that I have won this round, Sean. You show a great deal of promise at this game, Mr. O'Connor. You will be quite a challenge at the Pooba table. Yeah, whatever. Curfew, out of here at once! This recreation will cease. Everyone return to your dorm room immediately. I will be watching you. I never want to skip that line. Looks like Aeolus is sleeping off his grief. Well, I have some homework to do. I can crib quickly from my notes, get by with BS, or work hard. Well, I should be charming enough to get by with BS, but there's actually no reason not to work hard. Let's see if I can impress the master with my er erudite ruminations on risks and rewards. That should do it. I'm only a little sleepy tomorrow. Whoa, slept late, gotta go. If Herr O'Connor will kindly refrain from snoring in my classroom, then I shall continue this lecture. Yeah, Sean did his homework, like a good boy. I've actually on occasion forgotten about the homework between when it's assigned and when it's due and promptly had to go back, but uh, this time I remembered. As I was saying, I see that Herr Kiro has not yet graced us with his presence. Herr Sosi, could you enlighten us as to his absence? Um, I didn't see him this morning. He was gone before I awoke. Indeed. Let us hope there is nothing about which to be concerned. Maybe he didn't get his homework done and was afraid to admit it. Ah yes, the homework assignment. Let us see how well you all did upon the topic of friendship and cooperation. Herr Kent, he wrote a fine essay. However, I suggest that you might want to put your words into actions by going out of your way to make friends and work with others. Yes, sir. Herr Sosi, a good essay as usual. It is amazing how much you and Herr Kiro write with such a similar voice. Great minds think alike, master. Little minds think like something else. Ah, yes. Fräulein Michael, if you had spent more time writing your essay on cooperation with others rather than antagonizing others, you would have earned a better grade on it. Fräulein Esme, your grammar and writing skills have improved greatly over the semester. I congratulate you. Thank you, sir. I was also impressed with your essay, Herr O'Connor. You continue to surprise me. Let's provoke Sosie. For the essay, I just used Herr Sosie as an example of how to use friends to get work done. Shame he doesn't have more friends to use. Tomorrow's lesson will be on magic. I trust I will see all of you then. Guten Tag. Curious. Joel is missing. Where, oh where could he be? Well, we have other things to worry about. Let's, uh, he's in. So let's say hi. You may enter. Do you think Joel's in danger? Herr Kiro is a good student who excels in thief skills. I believe that this class has been good for him. I do not think he would willingly miss this class. 
I find it very odd that Herr Kilo did not speak with Herr Sosi before leaving the school. Do you think that Sosi knows more about the matter than he's saying? I sincerely hope that Herr Sosi is telling the truth about his ignorance. What kind of danger do you think Joel could be in? You have had the opportunity to know Joel better than I. What do you think? Joel did mention the catacombs to Sosi. Sosi bullies Joel all the time into doing things Joel doesn't want to do. I overheard Joel telling Sosi about a treasure in the catacombs so that Joel wasn't forced to go to the sea caves. The catacombs are extremely dangerous for treasure seekers. The undead do not gladly give up what little they have left of their former lives. Good day, sir. Search for Hikilo. I'll try not to get into too much danger doing so. I'll handle it, sir. Not sounding good. Let's get to science class. Finally, I'm doing something on the up and up. This lesson will be about theory and practice of scientific principles. For example, there is a theory handed down from the ancient Greeks that nothing comes from nothing, which pretty much destroys the whole spontaneous generation claptrap. <coughs> Mostly, we'll concentrate upon the practice part of the lesson. You will have the afternoon to test out your theories and refine your experiments. Are there any questions? Let's, uh, ask a clever question. What's the difference between a guess and a theory? Isn't a scientist basically making something up? Not at all! A theory is basically a proposed explanation about how something works. For instance, there's the theory of gravity to explain why things fall downward when dropped. Clearly, things fall down because like attracts like, and the Earth is like everything else, only bigger. Good! Let's get started with our experiments. Alright, let's make some flash powder some more flash powder. I just really like flash powder, okay? Supper time, my favorite time of the day. I will go and do my uh, obligatory daily card practice because I still want to be able to beat Joel wherever he is. Let's do our practice. Gotta know when to walk away and know when to run. And off to dinner. Another satisfied customer here at this cooking school. Grab our apple.
which we will go drop off. I'll just leave the cork and apple here. Maybe the cork's hungry now. He can't just find things in the castle. Let's see if I need any charcoal. I do not. rec room. Doesn't sound like anyone's talking in there now. As a matter of fact, no one's in here at all. So see if Thomas is in the library, I think. Just, you know, making the rounds, seeing if there are people I can talk to. I suppose I should go listen at some doors. I'm not going to go looking for Joel today. I think that's a perfect cliffhanger ending. I'm not looking for Joel. But I'll listen to the doors and all that stuff. I hear people talking. Is there some reason why I haven't seen the other teachers here recently? I thought the midterm break was over. One of the rogue students be missing. The instructors be searching for him in the sea caves. I have a bad feeling in my heart that they will not find him. A missing student, Great Caesar's Ghost. This is a great opportunity for me to test my steam-powered mechanical bloodhound. All I'll need is a sample of the student's blood, his shoe size, and a few strands of his hair. As long as the lad is nowhere near the water, my mechanical bloodhound should track him down in a matter of hours. The boy be lost in the sea caves, Doctor. The sea caves. Pity! Another scientific breakthrough opportunity lost. Can't make out the words, but someone is talking in the room. Thomas is talking to the painting again. Maybe I can listen in. Even the teachers are searching for Joel. He's not in the castle. Prof Professor Featherstone Hall determined that. Most people are searching the sea caves for a sign of him. I think he's in the catacombs. I believe that Joel uses the fence down there for his black market equipment. He was probably was attacked by one of the undead down there. I like Joel. He may be more of a thief than a hero, but he's always friendly and polite. He certainly doesn't deserve to die while lost in the catacombs. I've got to find him. Oh, hello, Sean. So what brings you here this time? Oh, I was just snooping around and wanted to see if you were here again. If you're going to do some snooping, you should go looking for Joel. I spent the whole evening searching the south part of the catacombs for him. So he searched the south part. So how are things for you? I can't stop thinking about Joel. I hope he's okay, but I'm afraid he's hurt and needs help. What do you think happened to Joel? Do you know there's a thief fence somewhere down in the catacombs who buys and sells things? Joel got some of his black market goods from the fence. I think that Joel went down to the catacombs to visit the fence, but something went after him. Maybe one of the revenants that haunt down there. The catacombs are dangerous and terrifying. It would be horrible to tra be trapped down there. I didn't know you cared about Joel that much. I don't care if it's my worst enemy trapped in the catacombs. I'd do anything I could to save him. Joel is a nice person. He doesn't deserve such a fate. Yeah, fair, Thomas. Good night, Thomas. 
It's not a good night, Sean. Not as long as Joel's in danger. Poor old Thomas taking it kind of hard. I mean, he's right. So I think... What I'm actually going to do is head over to the entrance to the catacombs. Because there's no reason we can't go looking for Joel. But I'm not going to actually do that this session. So let's just uh, get in position and uh, call it a night. All right, that is all from me today. Tune in next week when we go looking for our dear buddy Joel, who is lost somewhere in the catacombs and apparently not the south part. Till then, some catchphrase goes here.